friends once again welcome back to advanced mathematics 2. So, I hope in the last session we have discussed so many points. So, one is uh, we have solved various examples on dot product right. So, before that we have defined a dot product and after that we have solved variety of examples on a dot product right. And after that we have discussed about a right handed rectangular system is it clear. Now, how do we define a three dimensional geometry or a right handed rectangular system x axis, y axis and z axis is it clear. Along with those three axis we have defined a unit factors is it clear. It means we have discussed about a right handed system of factors right and after that we have introduced uh, factor product or cross product. If they give two factors, how do we calculate A cross B? That we may call it as an cross product. Is it clear? And after that, I have introduced a right hand rule. Is it clear? And we have discussed various properties of a cross product. Right? So it means if they give two factors, right? And we are able to define what do you mean by A cross B? Is it clear? And uh, whether is it equal to B cross A or not? That is one property of a cross product. I think in the in this case, A cross B is not equal to B cross A. And similarly, I think we have discussed about a distributula in a cross product. Is it clear? Right? And after that, I have given the geometrical interpretation of A cross B. Right? I hope you will get the area of the parallelogram. Right? And similarly, we have discussed about uh, vector product components as well. Suppose, if they give a vector A that can be uh, represented by A 1 i plus A 2 j plus A 3 k. And similarly, they will give another vector say B is equal to B 1 i B 2 j B 3 k. Then how do we find out the value of uh, A cross B as well. I hope now I want to solve one uh, such type of uh, example where I have stopped in the last session. Is it clear? So, for example, it is given that uh, two vectors uh, namely one vector is 5 i minus j plus 2 k. Right? So, another vector is 2 i plus 3 j minus k. Right? So, now we want to find out uh, a cross b or cross product of uh, these two vectors. Is it clear? So, you are already familiar with the definition of a cross product. Right. So, using the definition of cross product, now you can calculate product of these two factors. Right. As you know, you can write down in the form of determinant. Right. So, what is the first row? First row is i, j, k. As it clear? Unit factors. Then second row is you can write down the coefficients of i, j, k. Right. So, coefficient of i is 5. That is the second row of first element. Right. So, coefficient of j is minus 1, coefficient of k is 2. Similarly, the coefficients of i, j, k of another vector can be write down as a third row, namely 2, 3, minus 1. As clear. So, like that you can form a determinant and you know the expansion of this determinant. As clear. How do you expand i into means this is equal to i into you can ignore first column and first row. As clear into minus 1 into minus 1 minus 3 into 2. Similarly, minus j into you can ignore middle column and first row. So, 5 into minus 1 as clear minus 2 into 2 right. So, plus k into you can ignore last column and first row multiply 5 and 3 right minus 2 into minus 1 as clear. I hope you will get the the same thing i j k what I have mentioned just now is it clear. So, now you want to simplify it is a multiplication minus 1 into minus 1 minus 3 into 2 right. So, I have to simplify into i after simplification I hope you will get a minus 5 as it clear and similarly you can multiply 2 into 2 4 as it clear. So, 5 into minus 1 is 5 right again minus n is 0 it becomes a plus 5 4 plus 5 is 9 9 j. Right. Similarly, 5 into 3 is 15, right. 2 into minus 1 is minus 2, 
that is clear again it becomes plus right that is why we will get 17 it means after simplification right product of these two factors is equal to minus 5 i plus 9 j plus 17 k it means you can obtain another factor after multiplying a two factors is clear right so for example they have given these two factors after multiplication of these two factors you can obtain minus times of 5 i plus 9 j plus 17 k right so now i want to verify whether a cross b is perpendicular to a and b or not as a clear so a is one factor b is another factor whether a cross b is a perpendicular to a and b you can consider the same example you can take this factor as a a and this factor as a b right a cross b is also already calculated now i want to verify minus 5 i plus 9 j plus 17 k is perpendicular to 5 i minus j plus 2 k and 2 i plus 3 j minus k you can verify how do you verify so you know the formula as a clear right so you can check as a clear so you can calculate right a dot b that is equal to 0 so therefore you can say that a cross b is a perpendicular right how do you multiply so 5 into minus 5 as clear coefficient of j into j coefficient of k into k right simplify i hope you will get 0 minus 5 into 5 is minus 25 1 into 9 is minus 9 25 plus 9 2 into 17 i hope after simplification you will get equal to 0 so therefore a cross b is perpendicular to a and b right so like that you can find out a unit factor right perpendicular to the sorry perpendicular to a plane as a clear find a unit factor perpendicular to the plane containing two factors a and b just now we have solved one example right so we need a formula what type of formula we need vector perpendicular to a and b and a and b corresponding to the unit factor is a cross b divided by modulus of a cross b is it clear right so determine a unit vector perpendicular to the plane a and b so they have given a and b now you want to obtain a unit vector how do you find out a unit vector just now we have observed the formula so first i want to calculate a cross b is it clear i have considered the same example right so just now you have solved no right right you can take a is equal to and b is equal to a cross b we have already calculated right what is the solution minus 5i plus 9j plus 17k as a clear when you multiply these two factors so now i want to calculate modulus of a cross b as a clear how do you calculate square root of coefficient of i square as a clear what is the coefficient of i minus 5 minus 5 times of whole square means 25 as clear coefficient of j is 9 right 9 square 81 coefficient of k is 17 square so that is equal to after simplification you get square root of 395 that is the magnitude of a cross b right so therefore unit factor is a what is the formula just now we have observed a cross b whole divided by modulus of a cross b right a cross b is what minus 5 times of i plus 9 j plus 17 k what i have written here right whole divided by modulus of a cross b right modulus of a cross b is a square root of 395 and this is the unit factor right perpendicular to the plane of a and b right so like that you can calculate or sometimes uh, the given example may be like this if a is equal to they have given i minus 2 j plus 3 k and similarly b is equal to 2 i plus j plus k right and they may ask us to calculate unit factor perpendicular to both a and b just now we have calculated as a clear right in the similar way you can calculate for the given two factors along with that they may ask you to calculate sine of the angle between the factors as a clear right so they have given two factors what is the sine of the angle between these two factors we have to calculate right so first you want to calculate a cross b how do you calculate a cross b you are already familiar with the method you can write down the determinant i j k and coefficient of i is 1 that is the second row of the first element coefficient of j is minus 2 as a clear right coefficient of k is 3 and similarly from the another vector coefficient of i is 2 that is the first element of the third row 
coefficient of j is 1, coefficient of k is 1. As clear. As I have mentioned, you know the expansion of the determinant i, you can ignore first column and first minus 2 into 1 is minus 2, minus 3 into 1 is minus 3, minus 2 minus 3 is minus 5 i. Similarly, minus times of j into you can ignore middle column and first row. So, 1 into 1 is 1, right, minus 6, is it clear, right, minus of minus again it becomes a plus 5 j, right. And similarly, k into you can ignore the last column and first row multiplication of 1 into 1, 2 into minus 2, again it becomes a 5 k, is it clear, this is the value of a cross b. Therefore, the unit vector r perpendicular to both a and b is given by a cross b divided by modulus of a cross b. Is it clear? What is the value of a cross b? Minus times of 5 i plus 5 j plus 5 k whole divided by square root of coefficient of i square minus 5 whole square is 25. Again, 5 square 25. Again, 5 square is 25. Is it clear? Or the same thing can be written as a, you observe all the three terms. 5 is common. Is it clear? You can write down 5 times of minus i plus j plus k whole divided by square root of 75. Right. So, like that you can calculate a perpendicular to both a and b. In the similar way, I want to calculate the value of sin theta. Is it clear? Sin theta is equal to, you can write on modulus of a cross b divided by modulus of a into modulus of b. This is equal to square root of, just now you have observed, no? you will get 75, square root of 75. Right? So, whole divided by modulus of a. Factor a is known, you have to observe the coefficient of i j k whole square. 1 square, 2 square, 3 square and in case of factor b, a square root of 2 square, 1 square, 1 square as a clear. Simplify, after simplification I hope you get a square root of 84 as a clear. I hope now we are able to calculate a angle between two factors as well as a perpendicular to both a and b. In the similar way, you can work out these two examples, right. Find the unit factor perpendicular to the following pairs of factors. Here they are given two factors, 6i minus 2j plus k and similarly 3i plus j minus 2k. Is it clear? 2i plus j minus 4k, right? Another factor is 3i minus 2j plus k. You can work out in the similar manner, right? So, now you are familiar with a dot b as well as a cross b. It means if they give two factors, you know the geometrical meaning of a dot b and you know the geometrical meaning of a cross b, right? And uh, mathematically, you can calculate a dot b as well as uh, a cross b, right? In the similar way, suppose if they give three vectors, as it clear, right? A is one vector, b is another vector, c is a third vector, right? So, how do we define triple product, as it clear, or three vectors, right? So, you may call it as a uh, scalar triple product. Suppose, if you are able to define a dot b cross c. Is it clear? Or suppose if you are able to write down in this form factor triple product, it means a cross b cross c, we call it as an factor triple product, right. So, first we can observe about a scalar triple product. Suppose if you are able to write down a dot b cross c, right. So, what is the meaning of a dot b cross c? And suppose if they give components of a, components of b, and components of C, then uh, how do we calculate A dot B cross C, right? So, you want to use the previous results because you are already familiar with B cross C, right? B is one vector, C is another vector. Suppose, uh, if you want to calculate B cross C, how do we calculate B cross C, right? So, that uh, is familiar, is it clear? Now, you want to using that property or that knowledge, you want to define a dot b cross c. Is it clear? Right? So, for example, uh, if you consider components a 1 i, a 2 j plus a 3 k, that is the factor a dot another factor b and c, b 1 i, b 2 j plus b 3 k cross c 1 i, c 2 j, c 3 k. Is it clear? So, now you assume that they have given three factors. Now, you want to multiply. How do you multiply? I have written A as it is, right. First, I want to calculate B cross C. Is it clear? If they give two factors, you know the procedure. 
how do we calculate B cross C? Using that property, you can calculate B2 C3 minus B3 C2 I plus B3 C1 minus B1 C3 Z plus B1 C2 minus B2 C1 K. How do you get? <coughs> you can write down in the form of determinant. First row is I Z K, second row is B1 B2 B3 and third row is C1 C2 C3. If you expand that determinant, I hope you will get these elements as a clear into the vector A. Right? Or the same thing can be written as a A1 into right A2 into plus A3 into as a clear. Or the same thing can be written in this form A dot B cross C. That is equal to you can write down first row A1, A2, A3. B1, B2, B3, C1, C2, C3. I hope you know the expansion of this determinant, right? So like that, you can define A dot B cross C. How do you expand this determinant? As usual, you can write down A1 into right. You can delete column and row. It means first column and first row. You can multiply B2 C3 minus C2 B3. As a clear, minus A2 times of you can ignore. Second column and first row B1 C2 minus B3 C1, right? Plus A3 into you can ignore last column and first row. Is it clear? B1 C2 minus C1 B2. Like that you can expand this determinant. Is it clear? Right? Then you may ask about the geometrical meaning, right? Of three vectors. Suppose if they give three vectors, namely A, B, C. Is it clear? Then you know the meaning of B cross C, right? So B cross C, B is one vector, C is another vector. Then you will get the area of the parallelogram. Is it clear? Suppose if they give three vectors, right? What is the geometrical meaning? I hope you will get a Q, right? Then you have to think about the geometrical meaning of A dot B cross C. Right in a minute or two, you will come to know the meaning of or geometrical meaning of A dot B cross C. Is it clear? So before that, you assume that if they give two vectors, is it clear? Right. So then what we will get? Right. This is the angle between B and C. It is denoted by theta vector B vector C. Height is B into sine theta. What we have observed in the last session. Right. So modulus of B cross C is B C into sine theta. And we know that the meaning of B cross C is area of the base. Is it clear? Right. So what about the direction? Direction is B cross C perpendicular to the both both of the vectors B and C. Right. So what we have observed in the last session. Right. In the similar way, scalar product. Right. B cross C, A, B, C are the three vectors. Direction is B cross C. Then you can calculate angle between A and B cross C, right? Say for example, the angle between A and B cross C is alpha. Is it clear? Right? Then you can define modulus of A dot B cross C is equal to A dot B cross C cos alpha. Sorry, A into B cross C cos of this angle or cosine of this angle, right? So A cross alpha is equal to height. Then You will get the volume of the parallel pipette, right? It means the physical meaning of A dot B cross C is volume of the parallel pipette, right? So if you want to calculate volume of the parallel pipette, you can use the same formula. Is it clear, right? So now I want to solve some examples about the same thing, right? So assume that find A dot B cross C in the following. It means they have given three vectors, namely A, B, and C. What is A? 2i plus 3z minus 4k. And another vector is i minus z plus 5k. C is 2i plus z plus k. Is it clear? And you by definition of A dot B cross C, it can be write down the coefficient of i z k. First row is coefficient of i z k. Coefficient of i is 2. I have written here. Coefficient of z is 3. Right? And coefficient of k is minus four. You have to write along with the sine. Similarly, in the another vector, 
coefficient of i is 1, coefficient of z is minus 1, what I have written here, and coefficient of k is 5. Is it clear? And similarly, the coefficient of i j k in the last vector, right? Namely, 2, 1, 1, right? I have written 2, 1, 1. And you have to expand this determinant expansion is uh, already known. Is it clear? Right? So, 2 into you can ignore first column and first row minus 1 into 1 is 1. So, 1 into 5 is 5. Is it clear? Similarly, minus 3 into you can ignore middle column and first row 1 into 1, 2 into 5 plus of minus 4 into you can ignore last column and first row. Is it clear? So, 1 into 1 minus of minus 2 into minus 1. Simplify, I hope you will get a 3. Is it clear? So, that is the value of a dot b cross 3. It means it is not a vector and it is a scalar quantity, it should be observed. Right? And similarly, sometimes they may ask in this form show that the following sets of vectors are coplanars. Is it clear? Right? They have given 3 vectors. Right, and they have asked us to prove that three vectors are coplanar. Friends, I hope you know the meaning of coplanar. I have already explained. Right, so now you can prove that these three vectors are coplanar. Then, what is the condition to satisfy the given three vectors, namely A, B, C? Is it clear? The condition for the vectors A, B, C to be coplanar is A dot B cross C is equal to zero. And uh, we are already familiar with uh, how do we calculate uh, a dot uh, b cross uh, c. Just now I have explained as a clear how do we calculate uh, a dot uh, b cross uh, c. It is very simple. They have given three vectors. Uh, you want to calculate a dot b cross c, you can write down determinant as a clear, right? A dot b cross c is equal to determinant of first row, coefficient of i is uh, 2, j is minus 5, k is uh, 8, right? Similarly, 2 minus 3, 4 in the second row, as it clear? And in the last uh, factor, coefficient of i is 1 minus 1, 1, as it clear? 1 minus 1, 1. And as usual, you can expand, expansion is uh, known, 2 into first column, right? First row, you can ignore minus 3 into 1, minus, minus 1 into 4, minus 5 times of uh, ignore middle column and first row, 2 into 1, minus 1 into 4. Right, plus 8 into ignore last column and plus 2 into 1, 1 into minus 3. Simplify, I hope you will get equal to 0. Then you can say that all the three vectors are coplanar. Right? So, friends, so far we have discussed about uh, various things. One is a physical quantity which has both magnitude and direction is represented by a vector, and what is the geometrical meaning of a vector as clear and along with that we have discussed about an analytical description means components in case of two dimensional in case of three dimensions how do we write down factors along with the unit factors as clear i j k right then after that we have discussed about a scalar product as clear scalar scalar product for two factors a and b are any two factors how do we represent a scalar product and what is the geometrical interpretation of a scalar product as a clear and similarly we have discussed about a factor product right if they give two factors namely a and b how do we define a factor product right what is the physical meaning of a cross b and we have solved various examples about scalar product as well as factor product in the similar way just now we have discussed about a scalar triple product right if they give three factors how do we define a dot b cross c right and what is the meaning of a dot b cross c as clear right and similarly uh, if they give three factors it can be defined a, a cross b cross c is it clear? Right? So, now I want to move into the differentiation of factors. Is it clear? Right? Now, so far uh, we have observed so many things uh, about the factor algebra. Is it clear? Now, I want to move into the factor calculus. Is it clear? Right? So, then you may ask why you want to study factor calculus. 
or uh, in particular uh, I want to restrict myself uh, about uh, factor uh, differentiation is it clear right. So, many physical quantities uh, that occur in engineering and uh, science uh, require more than a single number to characterize uh, them when describe, uh, describing quantities uh, such as uh, force and velocity it is necessary to specify both a magnitude and direction as a clear. Suppose, if I want to apply a force on a particular item, then you should know the magnitude as well as a direction as a clear. In the, in the similar way, in case of velocity also, we need to know the magnitude as well as a direction and these are examples of factor quantities as a clear, whereas the air temperature which can be specified by giving a single number as a clear right is an example of a scalar quantity at the beginning of factor algebra I have explained in detail about what you mean by a factor quantity and a scalar quantity along with examples as a clear right. So, while solving physical problems are often best described in terms of factors. So, the objectives of this lecture is to develop the most important aspects of factor differential calculus is it clear. So, friends we are already familiar with differentiation is it clear right and we are already familiar with limits right and we are already familiar with continuity is it clear right. So, now I want to recall the same definitions right how we have defined a differentiation. Suppose, if they give a function ordinary function let y is equal to f of x right then how do we define a derivative of that function let delta x be the small increment in x and delta y be the small increment in y as clear then you can take a limit as clear like that you can develop the definition of a differentiation right in the similar way here also I want to take a, a function right. So, function means I cannot take an ordinary function I want to take a factor function that should be there in your mind that is the main difference between ordinary derivative and a factor differentiation is it clear right. So, for example, here I have considered a factor function of a single real variable f of t is equal to f 1 t right plus f 2 t into z plus f 3 t into k is said to have l right as it is a limit at t naught as it clear. It means that here f of t is a function right and it is containing uh, only a single real variable that should be known is it clear. Just like uh, y is equal to f of x, y is equal to f of x is a function containing only one variable is it clear. What is that variable? x is the variable is it clear. So, y is an dependent variable, x is an uh, independent uh, variable. So, like that uh, here f of t is also a function containing only one variable namely t as it clear here t is an independent variable right. So, f is an or f of t is an dependent variable. So, now you want to apply l means sorry limit on this function at t tending to t naught t naught is a particular value right. How do you write a limit of f of t as t tending to t naught is equal to you will get the value of limit right. It can be denoted by L is it clear where L is equal to uh, L 1 i plus L 2 j plus L 3 k then you may ask what is the value of L 1 i is it clear. It means uh, when you apply a limit of uh, first component f 1 t as t tending to t naught I hope you will get uh, L 1 as clear a limit of second component f 2 t as t tending to t t as clear I hope you will get L 2 and similarly a limit of f 3 t third component as t tending to t naught is you will get L 3 when you combine all the right hand side value you will may call it as an L right. So, finally, you can write down limit of f of t as t tending to t naught you will get the value of L it means that as t tending to t naught right the function f of t tends to L. It means as t moves 
towards t naught. All right. The function f of t also moves towards l. Is it clear? Right. Uh, it means it doesn't mean that it, it may not uh, be equal to l. Is it clear? Sometimes uh, you can write on f of t tends to, right? Very close to l. Not exactly. It may not be exactly equal to l. So f of t moves very close to l as t uh, moves very closely towards to t naught. Is it clear? Right. So t naught is a particular number. Right. And uh, we are already familiar with uh, continuity in case of uh, ordinary functions. Is it clear? Suppose if they give y is equal to f of x, sometimes uh, you can say that uh, the function is uh, continuous, or you can take y is equal to x square. You can verify whether the given function is uh, continuous at a particular value. At a particular value means uh, you can verify that y is equal to x square is continuous at x is equal to two or not, or you can take any other value. Is it clear? In the similar way, you can verify whether the given vector function is continuous or not at a particular value. Is it clear? Right. So you can say that the vector function is defined at t naught, and a limit of f of t as t tending to t naught is equal to f of t naught. Then f of t is said to be continuous at t naught. Is it clear? Then you may ask, what is the meaning of this symbol? It is very simple. Left hand side, you can calculate a limit of the given function, right? Here, f of t is the given function, and given function means it is a vector function. Is it clear? You can calculate a limit of this function as t tending to t naught. It means that it is the limiting value of the given function. Is it clear? What is the Right hand side, right hand side is f of t naught. f of t naught means you can calculate functional value. Is it clear? f of t is the function. Replace t by t naught in the given function. I hope you'll get one more value, right? And here also we have calculated the limit of f of t as t tending to t naught using the previous definition. I hope here also you'll get some constant. Left hand side is some constant. Right hand side is a constant. If both are equal, right? So in that case, you can say that f of t is continuous at t naught. T naught is a particular constant. Is it clear? Right? Or sometimes you can say that a limiting value of the function is equal to the actual value. Is it clear? Right? So any function satisfy this condition. Then you can say that uh, that function is uh, continuous. Then you may ask uh, one question on yourself, right? Suppose uh, a function will not satisfy this condition, then what we want to do? Is it clear, right? So answer is uh, a vector function f of uh, t uh, is not uh, satisfied this condition. Then such type of functions you may call it as a discontinuous uh, at a particular point. Is it clear? If the limiting value is not equal to the exact value, in that case you can say that a function is a discontinuous. Is it clear? Right? Or sometimes uh, you can define a function f of t is continuous for each t, right? In the interval, right? A is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to b. It means uh, here a is some constant, b is some constant. Say for example, we can take is Take a is equal to one, b is equal to two, right? So t lies between one and two. It means you can define a function, and all the values of t may be lies between uh, in the closed interval one and two is said to be continuous over the interval. It means uh, that interval may contain infinitely many numbers. Is it clear? So function is continuous for all those values. Right. So, for example, if it is one and two, it is continuous at t is equal to one. It is continuous at t is equal to two, and it is continuous at t is equal to one point five, and it is continuous at one point six, one point seven, etc., etc. Right. For all those values, function is continuous. Is it clear? Right. Uh, in the similar way, you can define a vector function of a single real variable that is not continuous at a 
point T naught is said to be discontinuous at that point. Is it clear? This just now I have mentioned uh, if the uh, limit of f of t as t tending to t naught is not equal to f of t naught, uh, in that case uh, you can declare that uh, function is uh, discontinuous uh, at uh, that point. Right? I hope uh, and now you are able to understood the meaning of uh, a limit of f of t as t tending to t naught. Is it clear? Right? So now we want to define a derivative of uh, a factor function. Is it clear? you know the meaning of a uh, limit and continuity of a factor function right in the similar way you can uh, define derivative of a factor function of a single real variable right a factor function of a single real variable say for example you can consider f of t is equal to f1 t plus f2 to j plus f3 t k right so defined over the interval a is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to b is said to be a differentiable at a point t naught in the interval right if its components are differentiable at t naught is said to be differentiable over the interval if it is differentiable over the interval it is differentiable at each point of the interval and when f of t is differentiable its derivative with respect to t is it means that here t is defined in the interval just now i have mentioned t may be lies between 1 and 2 and this is the given function right so if it is a differentiable function at a particular value that value may be may belongs to the interval ab is it clear it means f of t is differentiable at t it means that if t is defined in this interval and a given function is differentiable for all those values belongs to the interval as a clear then how do you write symbolically it can be written as df by dt that is equal to df1 by dt i plus df2 divided by dt into z plus df3 divided by dt into k as a clear you can denote like that right so in the similar way uh, when df by dt is differentiable then you can uh, obtain second order derivative as clear namely a d square f of 1 a d t square right is defined as it means uh, if you are able to define first derivative then we are able to calculate uh, higher order derivatives as clear right then how do we calculate uh, a d square f of 1 d t square it is very simple we have already calculated uh, d f by d t you want to differentiate the same function with respect to t one more time as clear right and if you want to obtain uh, second derivative right second derivative obtain using this formula if you want to obtain third derivative third derivative how do you obtain d by dt of second derivative d square f of 1 uh, dt square as clear right and in general uh, you can obtain nth derivative as clear so f is the given function d raised to n of 1 dt raised to n as clear d by dt of uh, its previous derivative previous derivative is uh, d raised to n minus f divided by dt raised to n minus 1 is clear so like that you can calculate a higher order derivative right and as i have mentioned we are already familiar with the differentiation in case of ordinary functions is clear you can use the same rules and regulations right so except uh, one thing uh, you can use the vector function instead of ordinary function right so for example uh, u of t and v of t be differentiable functions of t over some interval a and b it means t lies between a and b right so with c is arbitrary constant factor and small c arbitrary constant scalar right then rules for a differentiation of vector functions of a single real variable over the interval a is less than or equal to t is less than or equal to b r it means here capital c is a factor function right now i want to differentiate this function as clear with respect to t how do you differentiate you can write down dc divided by dt is equal to 0 as clear and the given it is a constant factor function differentiation of a constant factor is 0 as clear right and similarly you can obtain d by dt of c into u c is a scalar as clear u is a factor function how do you differentiate c 
you can keep as it is, you can differentiate u with respect to t. It means, coefficient you can keep as it is, differentiate u with respect to t. Is it clear? Right? Like that, you can find out the derivative of c into u of t. Is it clear? And sometimes, you want to calculate sum of two vectors. Is it clear? So, because we are already familiar with uh, how do we calculate sum of uh, two vectors? A is one vector, B is another vector. How do you calculate A plus B? In this case, uh, they have given U is one vector, V is another vector. You are able to calculate U plus V. Is it clear? Right? Again, it is a vector. Or you can find out uh, U minus uh, V. Is it clear? So, now you want to calculate uh, derivative of uh, sum of two vectors or difference of uh, two vectors. How do you calculate? You can differentiate term by term. Is it clear? Right? Derivative of first function with respect to t plus r minus. If it is plus, you can write on plus. If it is minus, you can write on minus. And derivative of second function. Is it clear? Right? Or uh, you want to calculate derivative of dot product. Is it clear? Right? We have defined u dot v. u is a factor function v is also a factor function. Now, I want to calculate a derivative of u with respect to t dot v plus u into, it means u into oh sorry u dot derivative of v with respect to t. Is it clear? Right? So, by using this formula, you can calculate u dot v. And similarly, uh, you may want to calculate product of two vectors. u is one vector, v is another vector you want to calculate a derivative of u cross v. How do you calculate d u by d t cross v plus u cross d v by d t? Using this formula, you can calculate or sometimes uh, if u of t is a differentiable function of t and t is a function of s. Is it clear? Here u of t is a differentiable function and t is another function or is a function of s. In that case, how do we calculate a differentiable function of s? Right? So, you can use child rule d u by d s is equal to d u by d t into d t by d s. By using this formula, I hope you can calculate. Right? So, friends, I hope you, uh, we have observed all the uh, standard formula in differentiation. Is it clear? We are already familiar with this formula in case of uh, ordinary functions. Right? So, now you want to use the same uh, rules uh, for the factor functions. Uh, is it clear? Right? So, here you can consider one uh, simple function. Right? So, the given vector may be like this. So, r is equal to t plus 1 into i plus t square plus t plus 1 into z plus t cube plus t square plus t plus 1 into k. Right? So, uh, clearly it is a vector function. Right? So, now I want to find out uh, dr by dt derivative of uh, the given vector with respect to t and similarly derivative of the given vector with respect to t square means uh, I want to calculate first and uh, second derivative. Is it clear? Right? So, friends we know that uh, i, j, k are constants unit vectors. Is it clear? Right? Then d i by d t is equal to 0. Just now we have observed if c is the constant uh, vector then d c by d t is equal to 0. Is it clear? Using that formula I hope you will get uh, d i by d t is equal to 0 and similarly d j by d t is also equal to 0, d k by d t is equal to 0. Right? And I want to calculate d r by d t. Is it clear? How do you calculate d by d t of the given function? You can uh, differentiate term by term d by d t of uh, right first term t plus 1 into i plus d by d t of second term I will write as it is into z plus d by d t of third term is it clear? t cube plus t square plus t plus 1 into k. Right? I hope uh, as usual you can differentiate how we will differentiate uh, in case of uh, ordinary functions. Is it clear? Right? I will keep i as it is a uh, derivative of t with respect to t is 1 and derivative of 1 is uh, 0. That is why I hope we will get uh, i right? plus uh, d by dt of t square. t square is 2t. Derivative of t with respect to t is uh, 1 and 1 is uh, 0 into j as it is. Right? plus derivative of t cube is 3 t square. Is it clear? How do you get 3 t square? You know the formula. Derivative of x raised to n is n into x raised to n minus 1. You can use the same formula. 
is it clear? Using that formula, I hope you will get a 3 t square plus a derivative of d square is 2 t plus 1 into k, is it clear? So, now I want to obtain a second derivative of the factor function. How do you denote it? d square r upon d t square that is equal to d by d t of d r by d t. Just now we have calculated d r by d t, is it clear? You can differentiate the same function once again with respect to t, right? So, I hope first function becomes 0, derivative of a constant function it becomes 0, derivative of 2 t is 2 into z, right? The derivative of 3 t square is a 2 t into 3, it means a 6 t, right? And derivative of 2 t is 2 into k, is it clear? So, this is the value of second derivative, is it clear? Friends, I hope now we are able to calculate first derivative as well as the second derivative if uh, possible you are able to calculate a higher order derivative for the given factor function is it clear and sometimes uh, the given function may be like this if r is equal to sin t i plus cos t z plus t into k right find dr by dt d square or upon dt square right modulus of dr by dt and modulus of uh, second derivative of the given function is it clear and just now we have observed how do we calculate d r by d t d square or upon d t square in the similar way we can calculate right and as you know i j k r are the constant factors is it clear if you differentiate constant factors I hope here also you will get equal to 0 that is why here I have written d i by d t is equal to d j by d t is equal to d k by d t is equal to 0 right. And now, I want to calculate a first derivative of the given function d r by d t is equal to d by d t of a first term sin t z sorry sin t into i plus d by d t of a cos t into z plus d by d t of a last term right. So, derivative of sin t is you know that cos t into i as it is right and the derivative of cos t is also known you can write on minus sin t into z right derivative of t with respect to t is 1 into k as it is, is it clear, right. Friends, you want to calculate a second derivative, you can differentiate all these terms with respect to t one more time, is it clear, that is why I have written here d by d t of d r by d t, that is equal to minus times of sin t, derivative of cos t is minus sin t into i, derivative of sin t is cos t, is it clear, this is the value of d square r upon d t square. Is it clear, right? So now I want to calculate a modulus of dr by dt and modulus of a d square or upon a dt square, right? So I hope uh, you know the meaning of a modulus of a. A means what? A is the given vector. How do we calculate a modulus of a? Is it clear? Or uh, another vector b is given. I want to calculate a modulus of b. How do we calculate? Is it clear? right you can use the same formula here you will get a dr by dt is equal to square root of a coefficient of i square coefficient of j square and coefficient of k square is it clear in this example the coefficient of i is cos t that's why here i have written cos t whole square plus the coefficient of j is minus sin t that's why i have written here minus sin t whole square plus coefficient of k is 1 i have written 1 square is it clear and you know the formula cos square theta plus sin square theta is equal to 1. I hope in this case it becomes 1 plus 1 square means 1, 1 plus 1 is square root of 2, is it clear, right. And similarly, the you know the value of d square r upon t t square, is it clear, right. Once again you have to calculate square root of coefficient of i is sin t whole square, coefficient of z is minus cos t whole square, k is 1, 1 square, is it clear. Here also you can use the same formula sin square theta plus cos square theta is equal to 1. These two terms can be replaced by 1. 1 square means 1. So, I hope so you will get equal to 1. Sorry, uh, yes, you will get equal to 1. 1 plus 1, 2, not 1. Right. Uh, another example, uh, sometimes they may give uh, factors in this form. A particle moves along the curve x is equal to 1 minus t cube and y is equal to 1 plus t square and z is equal to 2 t minus 5, right. Determine its velocity and acceleration. Instead of uh, giving a factor, 
uh, they may give components x is equal to y is equal to r is equal to then you can uh, combine all these uh, components or coordinates x coordinate y coordinate z coordinate you can write down r is equal to right x into i plus y into z plus z into k is it clear right so like that you can write down r is equal to i have replaced the value of uh, x uh, 1 minus t cube into i plus 1 minus sorry 1 plus t square into z plus 2 t minus 5 into k right so you want to calculate uh, velocity and uh, component how do we calculate velocity velocity means you want to differentiate the given factor with respect to t that itself is the velocity as it clear if you are able to differentiate this factor i hope you will get the velocity right so minus times of 3 t square because the derivative of 1 is 0 into i as it is 1 is 0 derivative of t square is 2 t into z right plus derivative of 2 t is 2 as it clear right and k is as it is right and similarly you want to calculate acceleration how do you calculate acceleration second derivative of this function right i hope you can differentiate one more time derivative of minus times of 3 t square is minus 60 plus derivative of 2 t z is 2 z 2 k is a constant i hope will get equal to 0 so like that you can calculate velocity and acceleration of the given factor is it clear or sometimes a particle moves along a curve whose parametric equations are they have given x is equal to e to the power minus t and y is equal to 2 times of cos 3 t z is equal to 2 times of sin 3 t where t is the time find the velocity and acceleration at any time t and also their magnitude at t is equal to 0 is it clear so far we have calculated the derivative of the given vector here also you can calculate the derivative of the given vector right so before calculating derivative first you want to rewrite the given components is it clear or parametric equations is it clear here i have written r is equal to e to the power minus ti right so y into z plus z into k as usual you can differentiate this function derivative of e raised to minus t is minus times of e raised to minus t into i and derivative of cos 3 t you can keep constant as it is 2 into 3 times of minus sin 3 t as it clear i hope you will get minus sin 3 t and similarly 2 as it is derivative of sin is cos 3 t as it clear i hope you will get 6 cos 3 uh, t into k right or well, if you differentiate one more time uh, i hope you'll get a second derivative that you may call it as an acceleration is it clear right so like that you can calculate velocity and acceleration right along with that uh, here they have asked us to calculate magnitude at time t is equal to zero question is how do we calculate magnitude we are already familiar with the magnitude of the given factor is it clear we can take modulus of v v is known then square root of right e to the power minus 2t plus uh, coefficient of j square and k square as it clear you want to simplify i think uh, in this case 36 is common you can take out and you can use the formula sin square plus cos square that is equal to i hope you will get e to the power minus 2t plus 36 in case of acceleration right you can uh, find out the coefficient of i square j square k square and uh, simplify once again you can use the same formula sin square theta plus cos square theta using that formula you can find out e to the power minus 2t plus 324 is it clear so now you want to replace t by 0 right replace t by 0 i hope here you will get 1 plus 36 is equal to 37 if i replace t by 0 i will get 1 plus 324 is equal to 325 so like that uh, you can uh, calculate uh, velocity acceleration and magnitude of velocity as well as acceleration at a particular time is it clear right so uh, i want to stop here only i will continue in the next section you can solve some more applications of uh, differentiation in the next session thank you